Gracie, have you had any epiphanies over the summer during the break? Because you obviously had a lot of time to yourself. You were going to school. You were working some. Have you had any kind of realizations about your life, your purpose, or the things we discussed, the things you've learned, anything that like clicked for you? That maybe well, you connected some dots for yourself on things? I definitely, it was a lot of epiphanies on life journey stuff. Like I declared a major finally. I was doing summer school. I feel like I felt productive. I did a lot of traveling and it was mostly like expansion of my mindset. I feel like my mindset changed a lot. I got a lot more confident in myself and my body and my looks. And I held down relationships better too. I feel like I, I cared and I asked people about themselves and I don't know. I feel like I was more open to everyone instead of being all closed off and kind of like to myself. I feel like I opened up more, hung out with more people, had more experiences than I usually do. I don't know. I feel like it was very eye opening and I feel like I took two steps up the ladder this summer. I agree with that. Mm. She opened up a lot. She used to be extremely closed off. And I feel comfortable talking to even strangers about my life now. Like I used to not even tell my friends about things in my life and things on me, but now I can approach a stranger and tell them everything. I don't know. I feel a lot more confident in myself. Confidence definitely went up. And what do you attribute that to? Um, learning more about myself um, and realizing what matters and doesn't matter. Like things that I thought mattered so much really are, are just like nothing compared to what I should be focused on and should be doing. I feel like it was a lot of mental work. I don't know. Some growth. I think you put her to the test, Corey. I think you got her out of her comfort zone. And she was really locked up in a way that I would make suggestions and she would just shut me down. And you forced her out of her safe place. And she really opened up to new experiences and things that don't necessarily feel comfortable. And she was a lot more willing to try things and speak out. I mean, it could have been the work with Dominic, too. I don't know. Yeah, it radically changed her <clears throat> her physiology because you could see it. And then when you look at the comparison videos, the side by side when she started, and then you know a couple months later when we all went to dinner, and then you know she kind of spins around in the video. You can see it. Her head's rolled back mm -hmm. further. Her shoulders are back. You know, there's just a different vibe, different energy about her than when she first started. How she was. So your reality filter and how you process the world changes. And because you feel more peaceful, you feel more peace and ease in your body, it feels safer in your body to do things that whereas before you just might have been too scared to do or too fearful to do. That's a big part of why I wanted Dominic to work on you for a couple of weeks because I knew that would happen. It would get you to the point where it just felt safe to do other things like you know going to Mexico with your girlfriends, traveling, booking plane tickets on your own, and doing those kinds of things. It was cool. I was doing that. things I've never done before in my whole life. Just like I don't know, just spur of the moment decisions. I'm still making them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's it feels good. I definitely got thrown out of my comfort zone, and my social anxiety like dropped, and I feel so much more comfortable in social situations and. Also, before this, I, like, when I first got here, I kind of was just, I knew you, obviously. Like, I, But the people you were working with and I was meeting new people, new experiences, being on camera, um, going and traveling, to, I don't know, just so much new. I needed, like, a rebirth. And now it's like, I feel like the birth is finished. Mm -hmm. And I've accomplished what I needed to. But, yeah, lots of growth. You broke her out of a shell. She did the work, and she's excited about doing one circuit a week, right? And running <laughs> and weight training and green yeah. juicing. And Maybe. Probably not. <laughs> but 
She's still working on it. My, my roommates work out, so maybe that'll yeah, encourage that's good. me. All three of them. Oh. Oh, ah, well, you should get your ass in the gym. That's you what get... got your sister in the gym was the fact that her roommates did. Yeah, you are who you associate with. I know you're going to be like, you're just making up excuses, but when I work out with people who have worked out consistently, I can't keep up and it's embarrassing. And I feel like I'm holding them back too. Like when let's go on a run. I have to I run for like maybe two minutes and then I'm like oh, like I have to walk the rest and they're like far ahead of me. Like I feel like I I hold people back when I work. But out you can them. go in the gym and do that. And everybody's True. on a different treadmill and you're going at your own pace. Well she doesn't have her running shoes. You left them in Orlando. Mm. I I wouldn't want to go on a treadmill. Slacker. I hate running. I'd want to do like work Weights. core. Mm-hmm. No, not like I don't like weights either. I like I want like a flat tummy, like abs, you know, maybe some like yoga stuff. Yeah, some you butt got a giant, stuff. giant beer gut there. Your, your tummy's already flat. No, but like muscle, like core toned in the tummy. I don't like lifting. I don't know. She's never done it. I'm just not a working out girl. The that's only the working story. out I did that's definitely the story. in my life I'm just was not a dance. Working out girl. And that's not. Dance it's, is fun. it's working out, but it's fun. I yeah, enjoy it's it. Fun. Yeah, I never yeah. was lifting weights. I did weights in cheer, and I quit the next year. I hated it. Miserable. <laughs> That's why I quit is because the working out, I swear. Some people work out by hiking and biking and, like, moving That's around better. and seeing things. Like, not everybody's cut out for the gym life. See, I haven't. That's You need bullshit. to be on my ass about really? it. That's a story. That's a story. That's I mean, so at the end boring. of the day. Don't you feel like a hamster you, on a wheel? If you want to optimize your body and reach your peak potential – you have to do weight training and you have to do cardio. But 90, like we're talking about at lunch today, it's like 95% of being healthy really is just what you put in the big hole in your face. So because your body is whatever kind of food or fuel that you give your body is what your body has to build muscle with. And if you are eat a bunch of crap and processed food and Red goldfish Bull. crackers and Cheez-Its and whatever junk that you – tend to like to eat which is good food but those are really the kind of things you eat on your cheat day because the more you can be disciplined then you add the weight training and the cardio to it do you have cheat days Corey? i'm drinking a beer right now oh that's your cheat (laughs) yep okay i like to have fun but it's like the sugar and all that stuff it's like if i eat that stuff every day i mean that's the kind of stuff that fucks my skin up yeah led to me getting skin cancer a couple times and yeah. it's like i have i don't have a choice because mm-hmm. it, it messes me up messes my body up so it's like i have I to be disciplined the only way i would ever be motivated to work out would were, were if like my health was at a risk because, like if i didn't work out like i would die or something like if I had to, to help a part, like for me, I operate totally fine eating my crackers. Like, I mean, obviously it's not good for well, me. Well, you're 19. Exactly. So you can get away with that <laughs> exactly. shit. Exactly. So if once I'm older and maybe if I start getting bigger or like my, I need to work out for my cholesterol or I don't know, just anything, um, uh, then I will work out. It's so hard to lose weight when you gain weight, though. You don't ever want to get to that yeah. place. It's diet discipline. That's because, what it is. like, when I was pregnant, I, I, I don't carry weight, but when I was pregnant, I put on, like, I don't know, 30 something pounds with each kid. And then you're like, oh, I got to lose all of this. You know, like, it's just, it's not, it doesn't just roll off just because you decide to diet. You got to work. I was in the gym three, four days but a week. But also, if I am having kids, I'm not gonna fucking. Sorry, you're. Gonna, I'm not gonna work out. I'm gonna be. Yeah, you are. Multitasking. You're with gonna my need kids. to. You're gonna need to work out. Trust me. Yeah, You'll need it. I loved it. <laughs> it was my. Re- Honestly, I, my, I highly suggest. I don't know how many young moms watching this right now, but the best thing I ever did with both kids right after they were born was go to the gym, even if you can only make it once or twice, at least twice a week. I tried to go more. Take your kid, put him in the little babysitting room, get a neighbor to watch and whatever. Even if you don't have a full hour, whatever you can do, it it made me feel good. It was an escape. I got to sweat out. I, I built my muscle. I dropped the weight. It was the best thing I ever did. I did it with both kids, and it kept me in tip-top condition. Like I was really fit until I was about 40, and then I got tired of working out lazy. <laughs> but, you know. I might go back to it one day. But, yeah, I highly recommend that to young moms. 
you can get away, get out of the house, meet people, sweat. It's so good for you. And your body needs it after having a baby. You've got so many fluids and fats in weird places that don't make sense. And if you don't get rid of it after the baby comes, it's going to get real comfortable sitting on your body. And you're going to get comfortable with it sitting on your body. Yeah, your, your, the cells of your body need oxygen, the proper nutrients, and the ability to eliminate waste effectively. And doing weight training and cardio and eating healthy gives your body all of those things. But if you're not doing the weight training and, and the cardio, you're, you're not oxygenating, oxygenating your body properly. And you're not facilitating getting, you could be eating the best food, but it's not going to get to the little capillaries, little blood vessels of your body just because you're not moving your lymphatic system, you're not moving your muscles, you're not getting your heart rate up. circulation too. Yeah. Have you ever had to drop like 10 pounds before, Corey? I I never looked at it as losing weight. It's like for me, it's just. Did you ever just get thick and go down? (laughs) Well, I was one. I was one fucking ninety when I was twenty nine years old. I had no neck. I mean, the the pictures are on my website. In that, um, I think was uh, either "Death Begins in the Colon" or "Rediscovering the Fountain of Youth." One of those two articles. I've got a picture of me and actually Andy, the uh, the you know my German friend. And we were in a limo. This is back in you know the '90s, late '90s. I don't remember where we were going. I think it was we were going to a, a game in Tampa Bay that Tampa Bay Bucks were playing, and we had a skybox. And we were actually going. With Mike Metter is our our sales rep, who was also in you know a podcast, a couple podcast episodes that we did. And you know, it's just I had literally had no neck. I had glasses it was before I had my LASIK surgery, and I remember I was like size 33 waist. And I was a, but I was really about almost to a 34 waist, and you know I was like 190, and now I tend to fluctuate around 155, 1 160, and kind of you know that's my ideal weight. But I'm that's, disciplined that's with my a diet. Huge difference. I eat pro, you know, and so what what I did back then is that because I, I recognized I just you know it was like every year year and a half I kept having to change all my pants because mm. they kept. I kept getting bigger. <laughs> you know, everything was getting tighter. That's the trick is you got to lose it then. Yeah. Once you but get I, would, I ate, ate anything I wanted. I ate a candy, pizza, fried food, Dunkin' Donut. It didn't matter. I ate whatever I wanted because food was food. That's what I believed. And then I got real serious about health. And so I cut out fried foods. I stopped drinking sodas. And, you know, I started, you know, for the time I stopped, you know, eating red meat and pork. And I mean, might occasionally might eat a, a steak. But, you know, or roast beef or something like that. But I completely changed my diet. And 95% of what I was eating was a lot of fried foods and processed foods and junk food and garbage and stuff like that. And so I was just changing my diet to, to be healthy. And I remember I was running like, you know, three or four times a week. And I, I couldn't get past like 10, 15 minutes. By the time it was like 15 minutes, I was, <gasps> you know, I was like ready to hack up a, a lung. And then when I changed my diet, like two weeks later, I was running for like 30 minutes. And I feel like, man, I could go for an hour. Yeah. It just changed it everything, change. changed my, my body chemistry totally. And so I felt better and I wasn't trying to lose weight. I was just trying to be healthier. And I dropped like 30 pounds over the course of six months. It just slowly That's came crazy. off. That's crazy. had to completely change my, my wardrobe and got rid of all my shirts all my pants, the shorts. I had completely buy everything new again. You know, when I was married, um, living with a man, I mean, guys like me, they loved steak and like it was always something. As soon as I got divorced, I stopped going to Costco and buying all that meat all the time. I It really changed the way I eat and it made me realize that who you, your partner really affects your health. If you eat the same way, it affects the way your health, well, your health. Like if you're eating greasy fried stuff all the time, you ever look at married couple couples and they look the same. They're both like kind of big. Same way, or, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and then once I was on my own, it was like, wow, I don't have to eat all that stuff anymore. You know, like I can just eat my salads and my fruit that I like, you know, it made me realize that marriage actually had me drinking more alcohol and eating more meat than I'm like I would normally by myself. The salads you make are so good. 
to the ham on it. <laughs> she likes the ham of my salad. That's <laughs> kind the of fruit, like dim the eating. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, maybe I'll start working out my nose. You just got to let it happen. I don't think you can force it with me. Let it happen. Well, I'm going to keep kicking you in the ass and pushing you to, to do better. Because your comfort zone is where you're most uncomfortable. I personally don't like weight training. I love to run just because of how it feels. That's why you know I usually run every morning. Sometimes I'll go two weeks or more and I, without missing a day. And like today was the first time I hadn't run in like a week just because you know, my legs and my calves were a little sore and I just wanted to take a break. But I, you know, I, I did chest and triceps and back and biceps last night in the gym and you know, I still get, you know, the weight training in and it's like, once you build the muscle, it doesn't take a lot to maintain it. But the big thing is really just your diet and being disciplined with it. And it's like, you, you know, you've noticed that over the summer you were eating better. And so your skin got better as well. Cause like I've, I've talked to you a lot. It's like your skin's your biggest organ. And so whatever you don't get rid of through urination or defecation, it comes through the pores of your skin. And so when you overload your body with processed food and garbage and you're not exercising, it's going to come through your skin and cause breakouts and things of that nature. Because I used to have those problems. You know, I, I know what that's like. And I said, when I see you come, you know, in the, in the last spring when you were coming over and your face was all broken out and you had some like some pretty big, big zits and you had those little Band-Aid type things on oh, the yeah, little hearts. Pimple patches. <laughs> pimple patches. <laughs> It's like all that stuff went away when, when you got healthy, and so your skin looks a lot better. Talk about stress acne too, though. The forehead was all stress, and then this is bad. E I think T-zone is stress, and then bad eating is the cheeks. That's why my cheeks were so bad. And then chin is hormonal. I've heard that. I've heard that about the chin. I'm not sure. Don't take my word for it, but that's, what, that, that's just – how, what I've heard. The, the, the jawbone. Mm -hmm. I always get them here too, like under. It's mm -hmm. weird. Random acne. But this colonic, is definitely you need a colonic. Eating. Do a colon cleanse. If I were to ever do that, that, it would be on my own and I wouldn't tell anyone. It would be a secret. <laughs> I'll do it when I'm I get very my colonoscopy. Private with that stuff. <laughs> Oof, I did one. I spent about a month ago. I, I did a, like a 24 hour cleanse where I did nothing but the psyllium husk powder and green juice for 24 hours. I think it was like Saturday, Saturday night. I had lunch on Saturday, and then at like 5 o'clock, every two hours, I was doing the psyllium husk powder with the bentonite clay, and you know every couple of hours in between that, I would do the green juice. And then all of Sunday, every two hours, I was doing that. And so Monday – you know, when I went to drop a deuce after running, it's like if we were talking about in that video that I did, it was like the stuff that comes out, man, and it's like this long rope that comes comes out of you, and it's shaped like your intestines and your your colon. And then you know that afternoon, I think around like one o'clock on a Monday, you know, I think I did two two of those silly moss powders in the morning, and then you know two o'clock on one or two o'clock on Monday, I went and got the colonic. And the colon hydrotherapist, you know, she knows where your colon is. And, you know, a good one will massage your abdomen because, you know, the water starts coming out clear when you got most everything out. And you think, well, I'm, I'm done. She's like, well, let me rub, you know, what did she call herself? Hill, Hill, Hill Rain is, was her nickname. <laughs> she's like, she's really into it. You know, a lot, some of the colon hydrotherapists are really good. So she started massaging my abdomen and it's like a lot more came out. I was like, damn, I thought I was done. She's like, I told you. That's crazy. It's amazing My how much stuff comes out of you. She's gastro. She's been, yeah, she's sat in on like 12 colonoscopies already. So maybe I'll get it from her. <laughs> <laughs> it, cha it changes your, you know, you, when you drop a deuce, it's like, you know, you get a nice clean pinch all the time. It's, you know. A clean pinch. As it's, opposed to what? As to opposed to being the the gooey kind like especially mm -hmm. like drinking lots of alcohol and eating crappy food it's yeah. typically makes the stuff where you wipe a hundred times <laughs> till your butt it's gets raw goo. yeah i know this is good mm, wholesome really gracie stuff. loves this topic <laughs> gracie okay, loves the this topic that's why i was like <laughs> like, like to bring it up she's like oh, oh i don't like talking oh, about it oh. 
cool. It's like what, it already has to happen. Why do you have to talk about it, you know? <laughs> See, maybe that's another – I need to get more confident with talking about my – Yeah, there you go. My problem. Maybe that – I'm a little insecure. It, I'm telling you, if you did that, if you did like a 24-hour cleanse like that and got a colonic at the end of it, you would notice it in your skin another in a couple thing of days. Is you can't like go anywhere. Because, like, what if, like, there's an emergency? That doesn't <laughs> Like, you know, happen. like, for the whole – it, it nah, doesn't? It doesn't happen. I feel like I would be, like – In the car. Yeah. <laughs> Stop. I'd have to stay home for, like, a week. <laughs> well, when you get to the end of it, when you're done, it's usually about 20, 25 minutes in when you're on the – um either the Libby bed or the Angel of Water, which, which is the ones I prefer – Versus the closed system where somebody's with you and they got to turn the valves from pumping water in to letting it drain out. Um, you know, when you do We're pumping it in, well, they yeah, have to pump it in. Yeah, that's I don't like the closed system because the tube is a lot bigger, and so the water comes in. But with the Libby bed and the Angel of Water, it's gravity fed, and so you just lay lay back and, like I said, you're you know there's a trough that goes you know between your butt and there's a big like base in there with the drain and you just, you know, you got a sheet over you and you just lay there and when you feel like, Oh, a little full, just, and it, and it comes out. And like I said, there with the angel of water bed, there is a mirror here at an angle and there's, you know, down below is a clear tube with see. lights. And so you can see everything that comes out. <laughs> he laid it up for you. Yeah. The Libby bed has it like down and it comes out the bottom and down to the left. So you kind of like look over this way and there's mirrors around it. So, and it's a longer tube. With that one, you know, longer clear tube so you can see it. I think we should take do a video of like Chunky getting it done. I already talked to them about doing it. I'd, I'd like to eventually Just do like that. on video? Like the whole world seeing Just my... Just your face. We'll blur your face. <laughs> you do it, Mom. <laughs> they're, like, they're like, oh, I, that raspy voice. I think yeah, that's I think crazy. I know her. I'd be so caught, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It makes a big difference, though. I felt a lot better after after it i believe you like 100 percent. i feel like it would be good for me i just i need some time to process that information i gotta work up to it <laughs> and man. decide if i want to i gotta work up to it yeah baby steps i'll keep pushing you keep bringing it up do keep you get like i you. feel like i'd lose weight you do a lot of people you know a lot of people will lose like 10 pounds like there was a woman in there she was much bigger and she's like oh because they have a scale so you can weigh yourself before, before. it and then after you get off, you weigh yourself so you can tell how much, how many pounds you drop. The people who like do that as their career, like what do they see first of all? Who do they see come in? What do they see in the well, Sometimes they like, see para parasites come out or big long, you know, like tapeworms, tapeworms like these big long spaghetti looking things that come out of you, para, you know, parasites. That's, That's cool. That's why it's real important to do the psyllium husk powder with the bentonite clay because it sticks to everything, it sticks to the mucus and gets it out of you. Like I said, mm. it makes a difference in your skin. Because, you know, when you eat processed food, your body surrounds it by mucus. And as it, you know, over the years and the months, as that stuff goes through your small intestine and your colon, it starts to cake up inside you. And it starts to block the little villi that absorb the nutrients in your food. And like I said, you, you feel better. And that's, you know, it's like everything that I, I do, everything I teach. It's like you, you can feel it. You notice it. It sells itself. Just like the SRI videos or the um, consciousness exercises. It looks ridiculous watching, you know, you do that on camera, but I, I don't know if you looked at the comments of those, but a lot of people are like, oh, I no. did, like one guy was posted this morning, he's like, I did the exercise, I want to start bawling my eyes mm -hmm. out because yeah, it releases energy. My, mom, I, my face, every single time, my face just tingles. It's totally numb. Sometimes I lose my vision and my, he like my ears ring. Like it's weird. Like I, I like feel like I'm going to faint because it's such like an overwhelming, like, energy just flowing through me like I don't know every single time my face goes numb and I, I told Dominic I'm like my face always tingles he's like really <laughs> I've never heard that one before but I mean it, 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 something happens during all that oh, yeah. exercise like it, it, moves it, the it energy. works <clears throat> it looks crazy it does oh my yeah. gosh <laughs> it feels good afterwards mm-hmm yeah, Dominic said he's had several people come in the past few weeks from the consciousness exercise videos because they started applying those and, and doing doing them in front of their TV, and they're like, wow, I really feel different. Let me go in and, and get worked on by him because it's the kind of thing. you you It looks ridiculous, but if you do it, you notice it. You notice it in your body. You, you literally mm -hmm. feel different. You feel energy moving through you even though, like I said, it looks weird. You know, anybody that's into yoga or anything like that or breathing – you know, it, they understand 
how it works. It's just, it, it works. That's, but it's like, don't take, take our word for it. You just, just do it. The yeah, find out yourself. Room, you have to try it and then you'll notice. Mm-hmm.